So we are Tuesday morning and we are in Vancouver. We're about to go on a bike tour. We're in, I don't know, I guess we're in the city and took the train in, which went really well. And these are our bikes. Yeah, everyone else has gone to the toilets. And we're about to see the city. All right, everyone's back. Ready to go. Here are our bikes. There's a movie set over there, not sure what it is. We're about to, uh, about to go. Some of it even more recent. So the neighborhood that we just went through, Coal Harbor, that was just being completed around the time that I arrived in 1998. So prior to that, it was again much more industrial down here. And we'll see a lot more of that when we're in Coal Street. And as you get it spread out across the country, I mean, it's a huge country, so you get very, very different things happening. Also, these uh, these cultures have been here for 10,000 years. Think about what our ancestors were doing 10,000 years ago. They had evolved. So if somebody says the indigenous people of Canada buried their dead like this, they're really oversimplifying things. Because there are many, many, many different ways things happen. It also has to do with where you are. Um, up in the very far north, you don't do a lot of burying of people in the ground all right away because it's frozen. <laughs> you can't get in there. Um, a burial practice that I like to tell people about because I think it's so cool, practiced by uh, Coast Salish cultures, um, primarily late 1800s, early 1900s. When you died, you wouldn't get uh, buried. Are you looking for a Sorry, I thought you were Oh, good. Okay. Um, you wouldn't get buried in the ground. Um, you would get probably wrapped with a cedar cloth, usually with the chest and head exposed. You get nestled into a little box, carried over. The yes, I know I'm filming. They practice more of a tree burial style. Um, this is a picture from the early 1900s. This is up near Alert Bay, and those are the fun funereal boxes or the coffins up in the tree. So that would have had human remains in them. But if you're the chief, you'll get something more substantial. So a lot of people think total coal and gemstones. There's many different reasons to carve poles. Um, this one on the end here, uh, this is a total pole, or is a uh, tombstone. This, the original was carved for the chief of the Haida Nation, Chief Skadans, um, up in uh, a place called Skidigate, quite a ways north of here. Um, the original pole was carved in the 1870s and was commissioned by his daughter and son in law. The son in law was going to be the next chief. Um, the chief himself would have been put behind that plaque up at the very top in a really beautifully decorated cedar box. Um, and you can see how it's falling apart. Um, and part of the, the a traditional part of the art form, once you've carved a pole and you put it up, you don't go back and repair it. Um, you let nature take its course. You let it rot back into the ground as well because they're full of nature. They will last a long time. They're carved out of single cedar logs with thing, beaks and wings and horns and things attached. And cedar is naturally bug and water repellent, so it does last a long time. The mountain goat reflected the chiefs. This represented the chief's entire clan. It was a, a clan crest. 
Um, I think this is how the son-in-law was ingratiating himself with his in-laws. Like, your family crest, put you front and center on the pole, how do you like me now? And then the figure on the bottom is the chief himself. We have, there's a saying in North America, low man on the totem pole. Have you, have you ever heard this? You, we say it meaning the least important person in the group. It's completely wrong. The lowest figure on the totem pole is usually the most important one. So the chief himself is really the foundation. Um, uh, he was carved as a grizzly bear because he was so respected for his, his, for his leadership ability. So he's carved as a very strong character. He loved to fish, he loved to be on the water, so they gave him a seal to hang onto in his claws. And if you look in the ear, you can see a little baby bear peeking out. There's one on either side, that's the daughter and the son of the So they got themselves carved. So did you say the lowest is the most important? Is the most important, right. yeah. Um, or one of the most important yeah. story. We'll grab our bikes, we're going to head out this way. Has anyone been to Copenhagen? Did you see the little mermaid when you were there? Were you blown away by her magnificence? She's tiny. She's a tiny little thing. <laughs> and she's kind of lost in this big yeah. industrial area. We have an homage to the little mermaid. There's a copy. I got the heart right up. It did, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs>